Hey YouTube, say hello to this Hawk anamorphic lens. Here we've got a new anamorphic gimbal related video today. This film is about kind of build a foundation for how you think about them and balance them, set them up. Welcome. Really important to, to talk about how you rig your monitor. Um, for this setup, I've rigged a monitor from a custom CNC milled plate. It's a plate which goes right to the top of the movie where your handle would normally go. You can just mount a handle right to that. And then I've rigged a NATO rail to that, which is now allowing me to go to a double arm to my monitor. Um, what I also do is keep my monitor in this position uh, so it's not too high. I see a lot of people doing these, these sky high monitors where they're operating and looking straight up while they operate. And I think that's a really bad solution. Um, when you're operating that way, you're looking straight up. You don't know what the floor looks like. You don't know if you're about to trip over something or step into some sort of hole. All things that I've experienced. Um, years of gimbal experience, you end up in a lot of planters. You end up in uh, a lot of places you don't necessarily want to be. Um, but the more jobs you do, the better your spot errors get. So um, after this monitor, I'd like to talk about how you feed your video feed to that monitor, which is my favorite way is to use gimbal specific HDMI cables. Um, and this gimbal specific HDMI cable is made by Ziller, Z-I-L-R. They make great cables. Um, this is their most flexible cable, but they also make thicker cables, which I, I use those for my handheld configurations. Um, this cable is also rated for 8K, which, whoa. Uh, I began doing gimbals with photo lenses and trying to use the autofocus, and then trying to use a controller for the autofocus, and then I got into cinema lenses, and I would use the Nucleus M. The Nucleus M was great for a AC to pull your focus, or to pull your own focus. Um, it mounts right onto your camera 15 millimeter rods, and then onto the lens gear. Um, what's nice about that is it goes right into the DTAP port, and that's all your cables the motor into the DTAP port, and then your wireless to your polar system. Um, this is important because you can only offer so many power sources. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually using a Red Rock motor, and this Red Rock motor is allowing me to not use the DTAP port for the focus motor. This goes right into the focus slot of the Movi Pro. This is a special feature of the Movi Pro where I can, here we go, I'm going to adjust the focus of the lens. Here you can see the focus is being adjusted. It's not plugged into the DTAP port, but plugged into the focus port of the Movi. I'm going to bring this back over here so you can see it a little better. Okay. And then let's adjust this focus. You can really see I have control over the focus and I'm not using any of my DTAP ports. So when it comes to building a gimbal, you have to think what accessories are using your DTAP power. Um, you don't want to have too many batteries on your gimbal. It's, it's nice to have everything running off of whatever batteries power your gimbal and then have the gimbal power your accessories. So you're only changing those gimbal batteries. What I'm doing in this solution is I have power coming from my gimbal going to my camera, and if ever the gimbal power goes down, the camera has its own hot swappable battery. Something that's nice about the Movi Pro is it has two Movi batteries. So it can change one battery that's low, put a new one on, change the other one that's low, put a new one on, your system never powers down, your camera never powers down, your accessories never power down. I, I recommend this workflow. Um, but with that, you can only power so many items. Um, so this follow focus works great for that. Another benefit of this follow focus and this gimbal is that you can work with something called the Movi controller. I used to work with the Ronin M, the Ronin MX, the Ronin 1, and they all work with similar controller systems to do their pan, tilt, their roll control, but they don't have control over focus. They don't have mappable abilities. You can't auto-tune from that. You can't see how things are doing from the controller, and that's what this controller does well. This controller has all the information of the gimbal, all the control of the gimbal, and you can dial anything in from right here. So it gives your assistant that much more 
ability to assist. Something that helps me work with my Movi Pro, because it takes a lot of tinkering, a lot of adjusting, is getting off the floor. And my Cinemill dock makes that so much easier. Um, I throw it on a stand and it's, it's on there. These little locks actually do a lot. I've seen some knockoffs and their, their locks aren't very good and they aren't quite as sturdy. I, I trust this, you know, there's a lot of value on this gimbal dock. I, I think you shouldn't cut costs in this place because you don't want to jeopardize all the costs that you've spent in this place. When you're working on a gimbal, you often are shooting outdoor shots and you'll have to use an ND filter. Sometimes you're shooting close-up shots, you might need to use a diopter. Um, and the, the ways that you do that, I first started with using screw-on filters. Screw-on filters are the lightest way to use filtration while on a gimbal. But sometimes lenses don't offer a front filter thread, such as this lens. And this lens, though very professional, doesn't have that front filter thread. So what I've done is I've used this Genus Tech matte box. This Genus Tech matte box clamps right onto the outside diameter of the lens. And then it gives me two filter stages. I even played with some custom uh, tweaks where I was putting four and a half inch four and a half inch diopters right in there where the filter trays go. It was working. I was getting some some shots. And um, that's one of my solutions. So I, I recommend this Genus Tech matte box. I recommend the Ari one. I recommend the Bright Tangerine one. But this one is pretty nice. Gimbals aren't a one day project. Gimbals are something that you're gonna explore for the next few years. And I think you should welcome the challenge more than give up with it being overwhelming. There's so many things from control to focus to wireless video, and you have to overcome them all, and you have to power them all. But the more time you spend, the more practice you spend, that's our solution. Thank you.